Hello viewers, you are welcome to this video. Today, I want to introduce you to Kirin Theory. Kirin Theory. Now, this is what we are going to do. I'll be, I'll be explaining some technologies that are normally used in Kirin Theory to you. First of all, what is Kirin Theory? Kirin Theory is a mathematical study of waiting lines or cues. Again, Kirin Theory is a mathematical study of waiting lines or cues. What this means is that cues are waiting lines. Cues are waiting lines. Now, we have all found ourselves in cues before. For example, when you go to the bank, when you go to a supermarket, when you are going to watch a football match, when you go to the hospital. So we have all found ourselves in queues before. Now, queues form because resources are limited. How many banks do we have around? How many hospitals do we have around? How many supermarkets do we have around? So because of limited resources, queues will always be part of us. So we say that queues are a part of everyday life. Now, so I've explained the queuing theory. We also have what you call queuing system. Queuing system. Queuing system. Now, queuing system is a set of customers, a set of servers, and an order whereby customers arrive and are processed. Queuing system is a set of customers, a set of servers, and an order whereby customers arrive and are processed. That is queuing system. Now, we also have what you call system capacity. System capacity. System capacity. Now, when we say system capacity, this is what we mean. It is the maximum number of customers, both those who are being served and those in queues, permitted in a service facility at the same time. For example, when you go to the bank, you see the total number of people that are permitted in the bank is known as a system capacity. Now, a system which has no limits on the number of customers that are permitted in the service facility is said to have infinite capacity. Infinite capacity. Again, a system which has no limits on the number of customers that are permitted inside its facility is said to have infinite capacity. What this means is that anybody at all can be part of the system. Anybody at all can be part, can enter the facility. Let me give you examples. The first example can be cars arriving at a highway tow boot. And when there is a tow boot and the cars are uh, cars get to the tow boot, you can limit the number of cars that get to the, the tow boot. Another example is shoppers arriving at a supermarket. You can limit the number of, of shoppers or customers that enter a supermarket. So such systems are said to have infinite capacities. Yes. Now, on the other hand, we can also have a system which has a limit on the number of customers that are allowed to enter that facility or its facility. So when you have a system like that, we say that such a system has a finite capacity. So you can have maybe a bank, and the bank will say the total number of customers that should be allowed to be in the bank is say 50. Now what this means is that if they get the number of customers to be 50, nobody will be allowed to enter the facility, to enter the bank. Before you be allowed to enter, one person must leave. So 
when somebody leaves, then a new customer can enter. So such systems are said to have finite capacities. Okay, so this is the system capacity. You also have this. Let me also explain this to you. You also have service times. Service times. Service times. Because I'm introducing you to key theory, you have to know uh, these uh, technologies. One of you things about the queuing theory before you look at the calculations in the, in the subsequent uh, videos. So service times. Now, in most queuing models, random service times are described by the negative exponential probability distribution. Yes. In most queuing models, random service times are described by the negative exponential probability distribution and it is given as this probability of service will take longer than s minutes now this is equal to Exponential of negative mu x. Where mu is the average number said per minute. The average number of customers that are said every minute. And then x is the target service time. X is the target service time. And then E is the base of the natural uh, logarithm. The natural log, the base. This can be found on your calculators. So the probability that a service will take longer than S minutes. So if you say probability that a service will take longer than say 5 minutes, then the S will be the 5. And then the mu will be the, the average number of people that are served every minute. Yes, so if every minute you're able to serve maybe two customers, then that would be the mean. Yes. Now, let's look at this. So we have looked at the service time. Now let's look at arrival time. Arrival time. Arrival time. Now, in most queuing models, in most queuing models, Arrival times, random arrival times, are described by a discrete Poisson probability distribution. And this is given as, as follows. Probability of X, we call to this one, probability of X arrivals, which is given this way. This is called to the exponential of negative lambda, lambda raised to the power X over X factorial for S equal to 0, 1, 2, and so on. Yes, the square P of S equal to S, this one, is the probability of X arrivals. Are you seeing it? And then lambda is the average arrival rate. How many customers arrive at the facility, at the bank? in every one hour or in every minute so that is the average arrival rate and then x is the number of arrivals the number of arrivals so if you say probability of five arrivals then the x will be five isn't it and then the lambda as i've already explained is the the average or the mean arrival rate and then E is, uh, is the base of the natural logarithm, as I explained in the case of the service time. Yes, we have it this way. Now, let's move on. Now, let me explain this one behavior of arrivals. Behavior of arrivals. Behavior of arrivals. Now, 
Most QE models assume that an arriving customer is a patient customer. Yes. Most QE models assume that an arriving customer is a patient customer. And now, a patient customer is one who will be in the queue until he or she is served without switching between queues. The person will patiently wait for his or her service. That is a patient customer. So most QE models assume that an arriving customer is a patient customer. Now, life is so complicated that we can have customers who are not patient. And because of that, we have what we call bulking customers. Bulking customers. You also have renegging customers. I will explain each one of these to you. Renegging customers. You also have joking customers. Joking customers. Joking customers. Now, working customers. Who are working customers? Now, working customers are customers who refuse to join the waiting line or the queue because it is too long to see their needs or interests. Again, working customers are customers who refuse to join the waiting line because it is too long to see their needs or interests. In fact, they have all been working customers before. You want to go to the bank to, to, to make the deposit money. When you get there, you see that there are so many people there. There are so many people in the queue. Then you say that, oh, let me go back and attend to one or two things and then probably come back later. Yes. So if you do that, you are a working customer. Now, let's look at reneging customers. Now, let me explain this one. Renege. Renege. The word renege. If you renege on, say, a promise, it means that you have failed to fulfill the promise. Renege on a promise. You have failed to fulfill the promise or a promise. Now, many customers are customers who join the, the queues all right, but then become impatient and leave without completing their transactions. Again, Renegade customers are customers who join the queues but then become impatient and live without completing their transactions. In fact, they have all been uh, Renegade customers before. You go to maybe uh, a service facility, there are so many people there. And then you say, oh, let me join the queue. You'll be, you be in the queue. Then when, when you see how the, the queue is moving, how people are being said, you can say that, oh, let me go back and do one or two things and then probably come back. At times you go and you not come back. Yes. So it means that you have not been able to, to, to fulfill your promise. You wanted to be said, but you could not wait to be said. So you are a nagging customer. Now, joking customers. Joking customers. A jockey is someone who rides a horse in a race. A jockey, someone who rides a horse in, uh, in, in, in a race. So if you are a jockey customer, what it means is that you will switch between queues, thinking that you get served faster by doing so. So anytime you do that, then you are a jockey customer. So jockey customers are customers who switch between queues, thinking that they will get served faster by doing so. Hmm? If you are the person who just move from this queue to this queue, or even if there is only one queue, the person will always try to, to, to get closer to, uh, to, 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 the, to the server or to get in front of those who enter the facility before him or her. Yes, so when you do that, you are a jockeying customer. You are like someone who is riding a horse in a race. You are a jockeying customer. Yes. So these are, the, apart from the, 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 the patient uh, customer, these are the other types of customers we have in the system. Okay. Now, let me explain this one. Let's move on to this one. We have what you also call Q discipline. Q 
this internet. You can't be doing Q theory without knowing these uh, technologies. You need to really understand Q discipline. Now, Q discipline is the rule by which customers in the waiting line or lines receive service. Q discipline, again, is the rule by which customers in the waiting line or lines receive service. That is, those who are in the queue or queues. The rule by which they are going to receive service is the queue discipline. Now, we have we have first in, first out. Sometimes for people, first in, first out. It means that if I get if I get into a service facility before a friend, I have to be first, served before that friend. First in, first out. Do you see it? If I get into the facility before a friend, I have to leave the facility before the friend. Yes, when you are doing that, you are all uh, 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 waiting uh, patient customers. Yes. So first in, first out. You also have what you call first come, first set. Yes. First come, first set. And then this one is self explanatory. It's almost the same as uh, the, the first one, the FIFO. And then lastly, we have last in, first out. LIFO. Last in, first out. Last in, first out. Now, this normally occurs uh, when you have a system with a finite capacity. Yes, when there is a limit to the number of customers who are, can enter the, the, the service facility. For example, when you see that 20 people, 20 customers can be contained in the facility or are permitted, can be permitted to, end, to be in the facility. What this means is that if when they get the, the facility gets the 20 customers, until one customer leaves, nobody can enter. So in other words, when somebody is entering, another person is entering, then one of the customers must leave. So last in, first out. Yes, so as the last person enters, then the first person will be leaving. I see it. So this is the leafle. So this is the, the, what you mean by Q discipline. So viewers, these are some of the, 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 the terminologies that you need to know as far as queuing theory is, is concerned. This is an introductory uh, lecture. Yes, in the, in the next video, you look at single channel queuing model with Python arrivals and uh, exponential service time. Yes, those of you who have not subscribed to my YouTube channel, don't forget to do that. Shamala Jr. Subscribe to it, and then when you subscribe, don't forget to hit the notification button so that any time I upload a new video, you'll be alerted or notified. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much.